Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining the webinar today. I just wanted to mention that as we go through this, uh, I'm going to have a few slides in which after the webinar, we're going to send out to you. You're going to have a follow-up that includes this slide deck um, and also a recording of the webinar in case you missed it or wanted to rewatch it. Also, if any questions come up throughout the webinar, please feel free to use the question panel within GoToWebinar. Just type it right in there. And then we have somebody watching that line, and I'll actually answer those questions as we go through. So no need to wait till the end, but I will also pause for uh, five to 10 minutes towards the end to just get any last questions in. All right, All right so today what we're going to do is go through our webinar called Enhancing Your Excel-Based Budget Process by Leveraging Venna's Workflow Functionality. My name is Zachary Griggs. I've been with JMT for about seven years now. I'm currently the FP&A practice manager. And for about four years with JMT, I was the director of finance here. And I always like to mention that because it gave me the experience of being on both ends of the table. I've used a lot of these different solutions that JMT resells as an end user where others have implemented them for us to address some of our issues. And I've also been an implementer for products like Intact, Adaptive Insights, and the one we're gonna look at today, Venna Solutions. All right, so we're going to start off by talking about a, a few common struggles that come up when you're using Excel as a collaborative tool. These are things that are uh, really across many organizations, almost all organizations that use Excel, and they have multiple people involved in the process. Once you have a team that's grown beyond two or three people, these tend to surface. These include having issues versioning of the files. So if somebody makes a change, they send you that file and that you might have to make a modification after that. So now you have issues where which one is the latest and greatest, and then bridging the gap between the two. A lot of that exchange also happens within emails. So when you make that change, you have to then go into your email in your inbox, send it off to somebody else, and then while you're emailing them, you might be getting back another version. So the back and forth is a bit disconnected from the, the actual process. You're also going to have to rely on email when you go through your external reminders, or you might potentially have to go around the corner and knock on their office and let them know, uh, we need to create this uh, board approved budget, and these are the deadlines in which we need to complete that activity by. And you need to be on their case, either by email or in person, to make sure that they stick to that deadline. As an extension of that, you're also going to have a lot of gray areas, potentially, around those submission deadlines. You might have needed your personnel data to be updated by Friday, but it didn't happen until Monday. So now you've lost the day towards your ultimate goal of completing that board approved budget by a certain date. And of course, within Excel, you always have the fear that your formulas are going to get overwritten. And you're going to have some data integrity issues within your different templates. And then overall, because all of this is external from the actual process, it's disconnected, you, you're, going to have, you're going to have a lack of visibility into the inefficiencies. Where are the areas that it's taking uh, longer than expected to complete something? Uh, what do I need to address to make this uh, more efficient in the future? You don't really have that visibility unless you're going through your emails or uh, referencing previous meetings, things like that. It's not easy for you to figure out those inefficiencies. And of course, at any time, if you're running reports, there's always the risk that you're gonna be looking at incomplete data. Things might not all have been submitted towards your ultimate goal of uh, creating that board approved budget when you're running that report. So you have to make sure and just double check that everything is in hand and accounted for. So what we're gonna do today, do today is take a look at a few key pieces of functionality within Venno and their product. Uh, certain things such as a robust audit trail that's going to allow us to track different data changes within Excel templates, uh, as well as the uh, process changes. So a data change would be if you went from $100 to $200 for an expense line item, you can see who made the change, when they made it, and what the value was before and after. A process change uh, might be something like, I need to have my uh, staff accountant enter in this value, but instead of having them do it uh, in this process, we're gonna shift it over and put that in the hands of the programmatic staff. We're gonna move things around within the process. You're able to track both. And you can also see who entered different values that are associated with them, different input values, who approved something, all of that's gonna get tracked within that robust audit trail. You're also gonna see some formal templates. These templates are going to be 
Excel-based templates, just like you'd think of in, an, in your current Excel-based process, but they're going to be associated with Venom. It's still going to be using that native Excel, though. And they're going to have hard deadlines. So you're going to say, I need this to be submitted by Friday, and that is front and center for the person that's responsible for making that submission. So everything is in that one place within Venom, both the templates, the deadlines, and the ability to keep an eye on how everything's moving along. You're also going to notice that there's automated approvals within the system. So if somebody's making a submission and then somebody else goes in to approve it, that's all within Venna associated with the templates, all in one place. No need to go into your emails or have a meeting external. You still can do those things, but Venna provides you a, a one place to put everything. In the system, we're going to take a look at uh, workflows and then also dedicated processes. So the workflow would be start to finish. What are the actions that need to happen? in order for me to complete my board approved budget by a predetermined deadline. And I can break it down from rather than just this department creates a budget and then submits it, I can break it into, okay, I want them to do their personnel. Then I want to get into the operating expense. There's going to be some assumptions in there related to revenue. So I need them to input that. And then I'm going to go and approve the final balance budget for that. So you can get very granular as far as how the workflow is set up. That also includes the approval, so you bake the approvals into that workflow. You can also set up these processes. So the one today that we're going to talk about is creating a board approved budget, but you can set it up for other processes that you have in your finance department, also non-finance processes. So examples could be your month end close, your audit checklist. Um, you can anything related to uh, non-financial tasks, let's say if you have fixed asset management or project management. You could also set those up as processes within the system. So you have a ton of flexibility. So before I get into the demonstration, I uh, just want to talk a little bit about Venna, a few bullet points. So Venna's budgeting and planning tool is a cloud-based subscription. So you can access it from essentially anywhere in the world that you have an internet connection. All you need is access to the browser. I usually uh, recommend Google Chrome or Mozilla Firefox but you can use Internet Explorer or any of the other popular ones. You also only need to download an Excel plugin. So there's no, nothing sitting on your local computer, and you don't need anything that's going to go sit on some servers that you have at your brick and mortar location. Uh, that, that download of the plugin should take about two to three minutes, and you do it once, and you don't have to think about it again. And all that that's doing is connecting your local Excel, the Excel that you use, many of us use almost every day, that Excel now has a, a bridge between the Venna database and the cloud. So you can use that connection to upload new uh, changes to your, to your entries, uh, input any new data, et cetera. So that's what connects the two. All the templates are created within Excel. So Excel functions as that front end within this process, and then it uploads it into the cloud database. Uh, and because it's based in Excel, you have all the flexibility and functionality that you would normally have in Excel, plus any additional enhancements that Venna brings to the table. So if today you're creating where you have these large uh, templates within Excel that you've been using for X amount of years, and they're dozens of tabs long, you can take those as a baseline and uh, what we like to call Venonize them. You can make them compatible with Venna, where it then takes the data and puts it into the cloud. So rather than sending it emails back and forth, you're then relying on that connection to put it into a cloud database. You're essentially converting your Excel process into a collaborative, uh, multi-team, multi-location process. And as you can see on that bottom one, uh, I alluded to it before, but you can also enhance any Excel-based process. So above and beyond just budgeting and planning, you can use it for fixed asset management, grants management, which we will look at today, uh, but then also just for financial close, et cetera. All of those can be brought into the Venna process. All right, so now I'm going to shift over to uh, get into the actual product. Okay. So here I'm in Mozilla Firefox, and I just go to venna.io is the website, and I have a login. I'm going to log in as an administrative user. So I'm going to play two roles today. One role is going to be that what we're going to call the manager and the other that's going to be the contributor. The manager, you should think of them as the controller, potentially the director of finance. They're the individual that is in charge uh, at a high level 
of getting everything done by the deadline. They're, they say, these are the people that need have responsibility, here are their tasks, here are their deadlines, and then they roll it out to the contributors. Contributors go in and they enter in their values and work through their assigned tasks. So when we go in here as a manager, today we're gonna to focus on this specific tab. This is the login for my user. So if you had numerous users, they'd have their own logins and their own layouts. But for me, and today, we're just gonna go through this manager tab. So down here we have a few different folders. So this is just for organ organizing your different processes. There's many in here because it's a demo system, but for today, we're gonna to click on this demo. And we have four different processes in here. As I mentioned before, you can set up numerous processes within your system for month end close, audit checklist, board approved budget. And uh, what's very common when it comes to budgeting and planning is having quarterly or monthly reforecasts. Those can be set up as processes as well. But today, we're just gonna look at this board approved budget option here. If I click into this, it's gonna take us to a grid, which I'm gonna make a little bit bigger. It's all drag and drop. And it looks a lot like uh, just a workflow diagram, something you would create in Visio or another product like that. And this is created, I created it prior to this demonstration, uh, but you're able to customize this to what you want your workflow to look like. So this is really a shift in, in mindset in a lot of cases when you go from Excel to a tool like Venice Solutions where it enhances the workflow functionality. You're able to take a step back and say, okay, rather than just saying this department creates a budget and then submits it, what are the things that I wanna have happen? Where do I wanna put in some confirmation stages to approve the data? And where do I wanna break it down to make it a bit more granular so that I know at those individual stages, there's some review happening before just putting in a top level budget. So in here, you're gonna see that we have a start and an end over here. So it starts from left to right, and you can see that these are little arrows. So this would be the first task that needs to happen. And this is a, uh, in this case, it's a, a pre-budget meeting. It's where myself as the, let's say, director of finance, I wanna have a meeting with um, the contributor user before we even get started. And if I double click on this, it opens up a new panel. And you can see in here, uh, we're gonna say, contributor's name is Mike, and then this is my user here. So the two of us are gonna have a meeting and we're gonna review this expense report. Let's say it's the expense report from the prior year. We wanna see how do we end the last year or where do we stand as of uh, July of this current year before we get into the budget. We're gonna have that conversation. And that's what I want to happen before anything else. Within this task, besides assigning individual users, what I can also do, and also besides assigning different reports, I can come in here to this instructions tab and I can detail that out so that Mike, when he goes in to his to-do list, he'll see my instructions on there. And I can put, let's connect and discuss expectations. And then I would save this here, and now that's available, so when he goes in, it's gonna show up and it's gonna let him know what I want to put in there. I can also put in supporting documentation. So if I click here on this attached documents, I can come in, and in this case, I'm just gonna grab a word document, a step-by-step -step budget creation process. It could be a PDF, a JPEG, uh, really anything that you'd like that you think is valuable for, in this case, Mike to see as he goes through this, this process. He's able to then, when he goes into, before this meeting, he can see what whatever data I want to put in front of him. If we were talking about OPEX, we can put in contracts, we can put in past invoices, uh, anything, uh, any file that we want to associate with that individual task can get uploaded. And you can already start to see that we're using Venna as a single place where Mike can go into it, myself as a director of finance, I can go into that one place, and it's all tied together. The communications in here where we have instructions related to it, there's gonna be notifications to the users that are associated with it as soon as I start this process. And we also have document management all wrapped up into one, including the, the reports and templates as well. It's all in one place. So now I'm gonna, close out this task. And if we continue along this workflow, you notice that it splits up into three paths down here. What this means is that those three tasks, import of actuals, the personnel assumptions, and then bringing in the personnel detail from our ADP system, all three of those can happen simultaneously. They don't impact each other. The, there's no conflict between the two. So I've set them up as three individual tasks. Now these can only happen after this meeting's happened, 
because I put this to the left of it, and you'll see that these arrows then feed into these. So you have to follow the workflow. I can't just jump in there and start putting in grant revenue until I've completed all the prior activities. Within these, if I take a look at the import of actuals one, you're going to see it looks very similar to the previous task. But in this case, what we're able to do is put an owner, and we're also able to put support workers and watchers. The owner is essentially the person that I want to hit that submit button. They're the one taking full ownership of this being completed. The support workers might be their assistant or somebody that reports into them that they want to help them work on the detail, but they're ultimately not the one that's going to be held accountable for that submission. And then watchers, those might be um, other higher level managers that want to have visibility into the process. They can't change anything, but they can see how things are tracking along. Down here, you'll see in the task, what I've associated with this one, because it's the import of actuals into this database, is I put the template right there. So now this user, when they go in, they don't need to go dig up a, a template format to put the actuals into. It's all in one place. It's all associated with the individual task. And I, of course, I have my instructions, which these are specific to this task, so I can put different instructions and also different supporting documents. So I'm able to key those in just like I was on the prior task. Up top here, you're going to see a date. If I click on this, what this allows us to do is associate a due date with this individual task. I can pick a specific day. In this case, I chose uh, Friday the 26th, tomorrow. And you can actually pick a specific time, too, if you wanted to get that specific. Or you can go in here and choose a smart date. How a smart date works is that you use a trigger. Let's say you can see the process start before the process end date or when the task starts. So you'll see in this case, the pre-budget needs to happen first before the import of the actuals. So I can say after the, this specific task starts, I want them to have two days. So the meeting takes place on Monday. Then from Monday, they have two days to complete the import of the actuals from that date. The meeting isn't scheduled until Wednesday. They have until Friday. So it shifts. It's a smart date that shifts along with when that prior task takes place. Or you can have no deadline. In our case, we're going to just uh, choose a specific date here. And then we're going to close this out. <clears throat> Down here, if I go into the input of personnel assumptions, uh, it looks like the exact same layout as the import of actuals. The difference being is that I'm associating different templates with each of the different tasks. So for the import, they need, a, they need the template they're going to use for the import. When they're bringing in personnel assumptions, they need a, they need a way to plug in those values, those percentages, those rates that exist. And if you think of your Excel files that you may have today that have dozens of tabs, these might be individual tab, uh, tabs within that worksheet. It's broken out and put into the system. <clears throat> Each task is associated with a specific template. You can reuse the templates across different uh, tasks. So let's say that you have three departments, and each department approaches their operating expenses in the same way. I would use the same template, but they would just be coding it into their individual department. And you can see down here, this is going to be identical to the prior. The only difference, again, being this here, it's a different template. So if we continue along our workflow, we go from these three, they all must be completed, and then we get into this input of operating expenses. Now, this task won't even show up for the users until those prior actions have taken place and they've been submitted. So it gives you the ability to put a hold on when you want this to happen until the prior activity has taken place. So for instance, with operating expenses, I don't want my staff to go in there and start keying in values before they know what the actuals for the year look like. If this hasn't happened, I don't want them to start putting in what they think is going to take place because they have incomplete data. So I put it in the workflow to be contingent on the other ones prior being completed. And again, if I click into this, you'll see one difference that you'll see on the input of operating expenses is that it has two templates. And there's no limit on the number of templates you can associate with it. In this case, with operating expenses, we have both indirect and direct expenses. So I'm able to put that in as two distinct templates. So when they go into their task, they can choose which one they want to work on at a given time. You can also attach multiple supporting documents as well. I only attached one before, but if you had numerous, you could do that. You'll also see up top here that this is two days after the task starts. So that's an example of the SMART date that these three need to be completed, then there's two days from that 
that this needs to be completed and submitted. After the input stage for the operating expenses, so so far we have our actuals in, we've gone in and put in our personnel assumptions, we've put in our personnel data from ADP, we've brought that over, and then we've gone in and finished up our operating expenses. Now we're going to go in there and plug in our grant revenue. So we click on this, same as before, but a different template. So there's no real variance, but and you'll see here that this is a, a two-day wait, smart date from the operating expenses. So again, it's going to keep shifting along. So if there's delays on the input of the operating expenses, it pushes out two days. But if they get it in in one day instead of two, it trims off that uh, one day towards our deadline. So we actually become more efficient in that way. And then we have this green box here that's confirmed that the budget's balanced. If I double click on this, this is an approval stage. This is where somebody's going in. In this case, I just put the admin user. They're going in and they're receiving, in this case, a, the expense report is what they're going to look at. It's a report layout that's specific for what they need to see. They're going to go into it. They're going to review the data and then they can approve it or they can reject it. When they do that, the approval is this green arrow, and that means that the board approved budget is done. I've completed this, this workflow, this process. If they reject it, that's that red arrow here that routes it back to this operating expense, the input operating expense. So that'll go back to, let's say, Mike, and then Mike's going to be able to go in there, and then he'll see any notes that I made associated with my rejection, and they'll be able to make those changes. <clears throat> But this keeps it all in one place, both the approvals, the entry, the document management, everything is with living within Vena, and you have full control over what this layout looks like. I took a very simplistic workflow and built it out. But if you needed to add in other layers to this, you can. So for instance, let's say that we, we think that they need a, a preliminary report. It's not gonna be final, but I want the individuals contributing to be able to run this report at any given time. So I'm able to create this and just leave it off to the side. So then if they go in, they can run this to see where they stand on their expenses before they get to OPEX. Before, and then they can see what their uh, bottom line looks like before they get to the grant revenue. They have the ability to just add in another stage there. What we can also do is let's say that we want to push this out, let's drag these over, and let's get rid of this connection. And Let's put in a let's put in another report here, and then this is this is the final budget report. So now we're saying that this report is not available until the revenue and all the prior expenses completed here have been completed. This then flows into the confirmation stage. So we're able to build into it both the ability to add reports, preliminary reports that can be run at any time, the fact that they're not included in that workflow and also put in reports that won't even be available until everything prior has been completed. So that touches on that bullet point from the slide deck where you might be looking at incomplete reports. All the data might not all be in the system. When you have this set up within Vena, you have confidence that you can't even run that final budget report until everything else has flown through or gone through that workflow. So I'm gonna go in here and just clear these out and then you can see I can just easily drag and drop and just X these out, drag that arrow right back and shift these around. Okay, so a few other pieces of functionality within the workflow designer is if I go to this little gear up top, we have a few different options. So I can track the revisions. So th these are revisions made within the process. Was somebody in here, did they add in another step? Did they remove another step? This is where it'll get tracked. You can export this if you wanted to, just to take a look at what's changed within my process. Um, so every, let's say if you were doing quarterly reforecast, you might notice as you go through it for a couple quarters, some areas that you want to adjust how that works. You're able to track that here, add in some uh, new steps in the process, eliminate others, move them around as far as approvals, et cetera. You're able to make those changes and track them in one place. If I click on this details tab, You'll notice it has a start date and an end date to the process. So the start date here, you can see uh, that was last month. Let's see, here we go. Yep, June 19th. And then I want the due date to be July 31st. So you can choose at a top level, when do I need my entire process done? In this case, end of July. 
in a few days. I can also use this variables tab. At a high level, I'm, I'm able to create specific variables that flow through to all the templates, these being two examples. In this case, when we create this board approved budget, we're currently in July. So we want the actuals to be in the system through June. So by putting this variable in place, that means that all those templates that are associated with the different objectives and tasks, those are going to update to show actuals for six months. And then from July onward, it's going to show the budget figures for the remainder of the year. I'm also able to set in here what the budget year is that we're working on. So there's no risk that somebody's gonna be updating the wrong columns or they're gonna select 19 instead of 20, 21 instead of 20. It gives us a, a top level control over all of those templates that are existing in the process. So no longer do you need to go into each and update it, one for June, and then go into the next and make those updates like you would normally do in an Excel file. Okay, so I'm gonna close this, and there's this setting up here. It looks like it should be on the front of a VCR. You have a play button, pause button, and a reset button. What this is, is when I hit this play button, what it's going to do is gonna kick this off going to send the workflow and the notifications related to it out to everybody associated with the task. So, so as soon as I hit that, this pre-budget meeting is going to get kicked off and then these other tasks are going to flow through to different contributors. In this case, Mike will be notified of that taking place. I can also pause the, the process. So if at any point uh, it's going along and we're not going to meet our deadline, so I need to revamp what this looks like to make sure that we make up some time. I can pause the process. That means that none of those staff members can go in there and access any of that detail while I'm making that change. And then I put it back in play. They get a notification that they can now enter into their same templates and start contributing to the overall goal again. And then reset is if at any point you make it, let's say, to this stage and <clears throat> something has changed, you want to revamp how it, how it works, you can reset it back to the beginning. So you essentially go back to start here and it resets all the approvals, all the submissions. It's a master reset on the process. For now, I'm just gonna hit play process and you'll see it lights up in green. A few other areas that I wanna highlight is if I click on this table option over here, it puts the layout slightly different. It's all on a table. So I can see the same task and you can see the type of task that it is, if it's input, if it's a report or a review slash approval. I can see who owns it. If I want to take a look at say Mike, I can, and it limits just to show me Mike. So if you have many individuals involved, you can see that. You can also assign support workers, watchers, right from here. There's no need for you to have to go back to the designer if you didn't want to. So it's really a preference thing. And you can also copy the contents if you wanted to. So if you had five departments and they're all treated in the same way, but they have different owners, you can always just copy them and have different owners for each. So the next thing is these are the notifications in here. There's many where you can say whenever it plays the process, pauses the process, resets, et cetera. You can set those up. And what that does is it automates those emails that go out to the individuals. So before where you had to shoot off manually to let somebody know we're getting started, we have two more days left, hurry up, et cetera. <coughs> That's no longer the issue or no, no longer an issue because it's all tied together in one place. We also have a status tracker. Within here, it gives you a calendar view of what's going on. It tells you how many days are left. You can see here our deadline was July 31st, and also the status of each one of those individual tasks. You can also see on the right here, I can reset individual tasks. So say that somebody goes in and submits it, but then they come back to me and they say, oh, I made a mistake, can I redo this? You're able to go in there and then reset that individual task without resetting the whole process. You can also force check-in. So it all works on templates. So if somebody goes in and they're working on one template and it's Friday before their vacation, they forget to check it back in. What that means is that it's sitting open on their computer and nobody can get back into that, but you can have your manager come in here and force that to get checked back in so the next person can work on it. And I'm gonna drill more into that once I hop over onto Mike's user. Here's the process audit in here. It's gonna to tell you what's going on in each one of the different tasks. So you're able to see who's entering what, when did they submit it, when did they modify it, um, when is it due, 
uh, who's taking a lot of time to complete those items. In this case, we just started it, so there's really not too much going on within there. But as this had more users in there, more activities in there, you'd be able to track that and break down where are inefficiencies. Exactly. Where can we... Yep. we have two questions, if that's okay for me to interrupt. I'm sorry about that. No problem. You have, um, first, okay. are the users able to upload documents via mobile phone? So via mobile phone, no, you wouldn't be able to upload them in here. Yeah, you'd want to do it through your laptop. would be the best way to do it. Okay, and the, they had part um, of the question that you already answered. So keep going. Thank you. Okay, no problem. All right, so next I'm going to go over the files audit. So the files audit is very powerful because what this is, is each of those individual templates that are associated with the task, this is tracking the different versions of them. So say that somebody was working on the direct OPEX, you can see in here, previously I had gone into this task and made some changes. I can download this template and look at what it looked like at one o'clock today. So I'm able to revert back to any of those prior periods. So no longer do you have somebody with Excel on their computer, they make a change, they send you an email, you lose history of what that looked like prior unless you maintained all those different versions. The system's naturally doing it across all the templates. So if at any point you need to revert to a prior period, undo any changes, you can always do that. You can also put them side by side and say, this number looks much higher than that one. What specifically changed? You can look at both files and then tie them together as a manager. And again, this can be exported up here if you wanted to take a look at this in Excel. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pivot from the manager, the director of finance type role, and start looking at what a contributor would look like. So I actually have that open in my Chrome. That's over here. And I did the same thing I did with Mozilla. I just opened this up, logged in, and now I'm in there as Mike. You can see here's Mike the contributor. And all that I see is a contributor tab and then a version. And let's refresh. Now that we put the process in play, we should start to see items that are associated with my user. Essentially what a contributor is gonna see is you'll see up top, it says, what are my immediate objectives? What do I need to work on currently? And then I also see one of those do. I have four days to finish loading up my personnel detail from ADP. But it also gives me visibility into these coming soon tasks the things that I might need to work on in the near future. So if I wanted to, I can go in there and start researching or get the ball rolling on those coming soon tasks, but I can't submit anything yet. I have to wait till those prior activities take place. I also have some view only items or reports that I have access to. So in that pre-budget meeting, when I go into that meeting, I'm able to click into this and then there's that expense report that we saw before. And here are those instructions. Let's connect and discuss expectations. All of these that are entered in by the manager now flow through to my to-do list. So I don't need to check my emails. I don't need to look at uh, an external document that tells me when things are due. I go to one place. I go here. I can access the templates. I can submit the templates. I can uh, get to my supporting documentation. There's that Word document we just attached. And I can run the reports. Once I run this report, I can also put in comments. So I can say, this looks good. Ready to get started. And now that's going to be flagged with who made the comment, when they made it. And depending on your notifications, you can have it notify you as a manager that somebody made a comment. And you can even attach individual files right to your comment. So you might say, this looks a little off. Did you forget this invoice? And then attach that invoice right to this comment in this task. And it flows. It's all sitting within them in one place. So I'm going to close this out. And we're going to take a look at this to-do task. If I click on that, it's going to look slightly different. <clears throat> so I still have my form. I have my comments box, my instructions, my supporting documents. But in addition, we have a big green button up top that says submit. And then we have this checkout button down here. So the submit is when I'm done with my action, I'm going to submit this and it goes to the next step. I've updated my personnel detail from ADP. And now it's going to flow through to that next step in the process. Somebody's going to get a notification. We're going to keep moving along. I'm not going to hit this one yet. We're going to click this here, this checkout. When I do that, it just opens up my Excel. 
my standard Excel. It opened up on my other monitor, so let me just move that right over. There we go. So you'll notice in here that I have all the normal Excel functions, but I also have this tab here, this Vena tab. That's what the plugin is. It adds in that additional functionality that associates my Excel with the Vena database. What we're looking at here is a personnel planning template. And we have it broken up into direct employees, indirect employees, and we also have the ability to allocate them across different projects. And then it takes that expense and splits it up across the project. <laughs> so if I came in here and I'd say, I think Colin's been working hard, let's give him an additional $2,000 bonus. It increases the total expense. And then over here, this is also uh, increased based on his allocation. But maybe he's also working on another project uh, during this time period. So I simply hit insert. And then I come in here and say, okay, he's going to spend some time on project number two. And let's make sure that he totals up to 100%. And if I go over here, you'll now notice that those numbers increase. So it's only accruing in May through December, 25% to project five, 75% to project two. And I can add any number of employees like this. Down here in the indirect employees, I can do the same thing, but in addition to that, I can insert and I can keep them associated with finance, but maybe I know this individual is going to spend some time working specifically on project number one. I can come in here and then say that's 50 50, 50 50, same concept, and that flows right through. My expenses are updated. So after I've made those changes, and everything is navigated the same way that you would in normal Excel. You can kick, click into these, you can put in formulas if you'd like. Uh, you can drag it forward. So if I came in here, I can go like that. So you have access to all the standard Excel functions. And when you're done, you hit Save Data. And now that's committed to the database. So my Excel has become this collaborative tool where it's just an access point of, for the detail to get it into the system. And when I'm done, I close out the template, no need to save it on my computer. It's, it lives in that cloud database. And I get this prompt, I wanna check the file back in. And now this, where it said before when I checked out, it looks like that, where it says check in. And if I click on it again, it checks it, or it'll check it back in for me. <clears throat> what that's doing is making sure that only one person at a time can access that template. Now that's a setting I, I chose in this demo to only have one person opening that template at any given time. If you wanted numerous people in there, that's also possible. But in this case, you can see that you have complete control over how many people are entering values at any given time. If you have, let's say three to five departments and each of them are in the same template, but they're entering different data, you'd want them to be able to get in there. So that Mike can go work on his IT expenses, but then Steve's able to go work on his finance expenses and there's no conflict. You can set that up as well. So when we're done, we've entered in our changes, we're happy with what they look like, we're gonna hit submit. It's gonna say, are you sure? Yes. By doing that, that checkout became view. So I can rerun, I can open that template and see what I submitted, but I can't change it because I've already submitted it to the next person. It's moving along that workflow. Then I hit refresh down here. And once I'm done with that, I don't have any other tasks related to me. I don't do anything again until I get to this input of grant revenue. <clears throat> So if I click on this, what I can do is I can click view and I can open the template and start looking around and it's gonna be Excel so I can play around with it, but I can't submit anything. So if I wanted to, I can get started on this without having to wait for it to get to that point. But in our case, we're gonna wait. And I'm actually gonna go back to my other user, this one here, the manager. And managers, director finance in this case, in this example, is able to not only manage the workflow, but also be a contributing part of that workflow. And you'll notice that up here. I'm a contributor as well. So if I click on this, my to-do list is gonna look very different than Mike's to-do list. My to-do list has what's relevant for my user when I go in. So now if I go in, I'm just gonna click into import actuals. I have my import template. We're not gonna do anything with this one. We're just gonna submit it. I can, and if I refresh again down here, it updates my to-do list to close that and go to my personnel assumptions. Same concept. We're just gonna go click through, submit, get through a few more of these. So 
now you'll see that I'm done here. Once I hit refresh, it now puts in input the operating expense. And if you recall, what I'm going to open up in this other tab, I'm going to hop back over to that workflow map that we had, so we can always reference back to that. So we went in and we imported the actual, I hit submit on all three of these. And by doing that, input of op operating expenses then populates, it then shows up, so now I can get started. But I did not see that prior to submitting those other three. So now if we come back over here, let's take a look at the operating expenses. <clears throat> now this is the task that has the two different templates. I can check out both of them at the same time, or I can check out one. You can have one person working on direct, one working on indirect. It's up to you, however you want to split it up. You can have any number of these forms on there, uh, however many different formats make sense. We're just going to look at the direct OPEX. And let me actually bring this over here. This is just my normal Excel, so it opens up on the screen. You can see I'm in Mozilla, so slightly different download, but same process. And that changed over to check-in. Once it loads, you're going to see that little Venom prompt here. A couple prompts in here. In this case, we're going to be choosing the, the project and the year. I'm going to leave it at 2019 for now. But if you had that variable enabled, you'd be able to have it pre-populate down to the 2020 data. So once I hit that, you'll notice that the template populates. Now, all this detail is in the database. So I go like this, I delete it. Normal Excel, if I save this document and close it, I lost all my detail. With Venom, it comes right back because it's in the database and I haven't overwritten that data. If I come in here and let's say that we change a few things. <clears throat> So we think that's a little high. Let's decrease that expense. I'm just going to drag this forward, straight line 200 per period, and save data. It takes about a second, second and a half. And then now this is in the database. Same concept as before. If I go in there and refresh, that 200 is going to come right back because I've committed it to the database. So there's no concern that you're going to lose any of that history. Now, what we can also do is let's change this back to 500 and save that one more time. You can save as frequently as you want. You can see it's very quick. Now, if I go in here, how do I know what changed if I'm a, a manager and I want to see who's been making modifications? Why is my total expense for this project so high now? I'm able to go in here and click on this audit trail. <clears throat> and what this does is it tells me that something happened. Somebody, my admin user, made a change at this date and time, and they're in this task, and they went in and changed the data. What I can do is view that. I can view this here as well. This is a previous version from uh, yesterday. I can view what that version looked like at that time. But what I can also do is take the current version and look at this version, and then I can compare the two. And what it's going to do is going to open up two different templates. <coughs> I'm sorry. So in this case, we're in the new template here. So this is showing me the new value. And if I hover over this, it tells me that the value changed from 200 to 500 and it highlights all the changes that were made within there. And I can close this out, and then this is the old one. So that was the new one that I just closed, and this is the old one. So if I wanted to, I could just revert back to the old template, just that easy. So you never lose access to that history. I close this, and here's the template I'm currently working in. Another option that we have is if you highlight that one cell, you also have what's called a drill save in here. And what this does is it takes that specific intersection, that January date, and it tells me the value that it was and when it changed, who changed it, <clears throat> previous value, current value. And I can also view this. So if I go back and view that detail, same concept as before, it's going to tell me what was changed within the database. Let's let that load. <clears throat> and you can see it highlights exactly what I was trying to look for, that it was 200, and this is a previous version. So I can always revert back to this this if I need be. So we're going to close out all those tabs. What I can also do is we're currently looking at project one, but I can go and toggle over to project two. And you're going to notice all the numbers change because now we're looking at something different. Same template, but it's going to now bring in project two information. <clears throat> I have this cascade function as well because maybe I want to look at project one and project two side by side. So I don't want to toggle between them. So what I can do is Go to my project, <clears throat> highlight two of these, and hit OK. So now what it's going to do is those tabs on the bottom, it's going to add in another one for project one. 
and then Direct is going to show us Project 2. So within the same file, I'm able to open up those two different pieces of information and bounce between them. So I now have a, a view of both my projects, whatever granularity level of uh, detail that I need. All right, so I'm going to close this one now, and we're going to check it back in. Let's go back over here, and let's hit Submit. So once I'm done with that, you'll notice I have no to-dos, but I have to refresh my task list, and now I have my, my grant revenue. We keep moving along this flow. We went from input of OpEx to the grant revenue. So at this stage, let's go take a look at what this template looks like. It's going to be slightly different than the others. This is specific to grant management. In here, you can choose the month and the year, but you can also have that default if you want to use the variables. So in this case, you have all your grants broken out. You have some grant information, the ID, the description, who's the manager of that grant, the total value, and then the, the period of the contract. And then over here on the right, you have other data pulling in from other areas. You have the, the total budget, the budget to date, the actuals to date. You'll notice that somebody didn't in, uh, import their actuals, so it's not populating the total. And then you have your projection as well. And if you expand these, it actually brings you down to another level of detail. You can see your personnel, your OPEX, and these are pulling from the direct and indirect. So those other templates we were looking at, it all comes full circle where it flows through, and now you can see this as you're managing your grants all in one place. And that's really the beauty of Venna, because it's all sitting in that database. You can pull it into any one of these templates. They're all interconnected. It's that collaborative nature of the tool, rather than relying on Excels that might be referencing other Excels on the network and those formulas break. You don't have to do that any longer. It's all tied together via Veta's connection. So we're just looking at the summary tab, but if we hopped over to this monthly tab, you'll see it breaks it out by month. And in this case, we're looking at grant number five, but if I wanted to go to grant number four, all the data updates and populates for that given grant. So if I really wanted to get into the specifics that are feeding into that summary tab, I could in this one place. <clears throat> I just want to reiterate that all of these templates that we're looking at are fully customized to how you want them to look. So if you have existing templates and you want to just enable Vena within them, you can definitely do that. It's fully possible within the system. These are just the layouts that we've chosen for this demonstration. So I'm going to go in, I'm going to check in my file, <clears throat> hop back over to my admin user. We're going to hit, you can see it's back to check out. We're going to hit submit. And then we're going to refresh. So now we're at the last stage. We're at the confirmation of the budgets, making sure that they balance. <clears throat> in this step, if I click on this, it's going to be slightly different. So in here in the upper right, instead of saying submit, we have approve and reject. If I reject, we can put in a note. So we can say, Mike, what were you thinking? And we can hit yes. And that's going to then notify Mike. And then he needs to go in and update based on our map here, it's going to go from here all the way back to the input of the OPEX. And then he needs to go in there, evaluate his operating expenses, and then also potentially adjust some of his revenue numbers. And they balance. But in our case, we're not going to do that. We're going to go in here. We're just going to hit approve. Once we complete that, you'll notice that it puts a little green check mark right there. And then each of those different tasks, they all shifted down to this view only section because I can always revert back to them if I want to take a look at what I did at a given time. But then once you're done, you hit refresh. That's the end of the, the workflow. So based on this mapping that we created, it's made it from the start to the finish, and we've approved it. So now if I wanted to, I can go back in. And I can take a look at some of the different submissions, how long it took me, where were the areas that were inefficient, where can I improve on those, what are some of the, what's some of the comments and feedback that I got from some of my end users as far as things that might not be that user friendly. All of those things live in Venom where I can reference them and improve on my process for the future. I can also utilize this for those other processes. I can go in and I can use this as a baseline and then I can make it for my reforecast. But maybe we don't need to have a pre-budget meeting. So I'd be able to copy this entire process, remove this stage and then start that new process up here. So you can break it out and you don't have to recreate it every time. You're able to use it as a baseline as a template. So overall, that is everything that I wanted to run through today. Uh, that's really my high-level explanation of the workflows within Vena. And just something to remember is that 
this really sits on top of your Excel process. So you don't have to give up that those Excel templates and those workflows that you currently have. You're just making them uh, more efficient and streamlined in one single location, one single cloud-based solution. So Missy, do we have any last questions? Nothing else that's come in yet. Um, so just a reminder to everyone that if you do have a question, there is a questions panel uh, on your GoToWebinar box. You can type them in and Zachary can answer them. Give it a minute or so and see if any, any more come in. Okay. All right, here comes one. How easy is it to pull Excel files from different databases to compare data? So I would need to look clarity. When we say different databases, are we talking about, let's say, two different entities that are looking at the data in two different ways? How do we compare them? Or are we talking about a single entity that might be pulling HRS data and then GL data and then comparing the two? Thank you. And one more. Let's say Razor's Edge donor database to QuickBooks. Okay. Uh, so that's very common. So before I talked about the import of actuals, where this would be a data export import process, where you take a CSV and then you upload your monthly actuals. Now, Venda lends itself very well towards being a, an integration hub from all those different databases. They have a tremendous volume of pre-built connections with products like um, Salesforce is very popular, NetSuite, even QuickBooks, Sage Intact. They also have the ability to create connections with any number of other cloud-based solutions and even on-prem solutions. So you can have the integration feed the data into the system. So then you eliminate this manual process. You can have it pull the data twice a day, every day, where it feeds in just naturally behind the scenes. And then once it's in the system, you can report on it and consolidate. So you're going to look at your donor management information, compare it to your GL information, pull in your HR information. All of that can be in one place and referenced all within Venom. Okay. Can the final budget be pushed into an accounting system? Yep. So you can have a two-way integration channel where it pushes in so the data gets pulled in and you can also push out the data. Uh, what I often find when it comes to bringing budget data back into the GL, that having a single uh, direction into Vena is usually the preference. And then what you would do is take the format that you need to get it into your GL system, that Excel uh, template or CSV template, you'd set that up within Vena. So you, hit a, you just hit one button to run it, and then it creates that for you to put into the system. So you can either do bi-directional, but more commonly, I see that people just set up the template right in Venna so that when they're ready to go, they just hit play and then uh, manually import it into the, the other system. Thanks, and you got a that's very cool response. Okay. Yeah. Overall, it's a very flexible product and the fact that it's cloud-based, that's really what bridges the gap. So you're taking your local Excel files and you're putting them essentially into the cloud. And what that enables you to do is bring in all of this other information and tie everything together so you can have a holistic view of your organization while also getting it rolled out to staff that you might have all over uh, the globe, essentially, that need to access it at different parts, at different points. We don't have any other questions just yet, so we'll give it another minute or so. How many years of historical data can you upload? As many as you'd like. Yeah, that's the uh, broad answer that I would give. So Venna handles it very well to hold historical because everything is sitting within the, the cloud. So you don't need to retain these large files. It's all held in the database. So if you wanted to go five, 10 years of historical detail, you could load that into the system and then run reports on it. 
One thing that I've run into with a lot of clients, though, is if they've had material changes to their chart of accounts, let's say that you were on a certain GL system and you're migrating to a new one, and you don't want to lose that history, but you also don't want to maintain those servers or maintain that system, what you can do is use Vena to hold that history because you can set up both charts of accounts in one place within a single database to report on either one of them. So it's, you can bring in essentially as far back as you're willing to go in and just format those imports. Thanks, Zachary. We have time for a few more questions, so if you have them, don't forget, you can type it in the chat function. You'll also receive a survey after this webinar um, that will ask you what your next steps are. So if you are interested in learning more about the product as well, um, you can say that you're interested in learning more about JMT and we can definitely put you in touch with the right person. All right, here's another one. Have you seen organizations use Vena to assist with creating visuals on outcome metrics, grants and outcome results, et cetera? I have. Um, so what we didn't get into today is you can also use Vena as a dashboarding tool. And so you can create those visuals and charts and graphs to pull in the detail into uh, specific dashboards or report layouts. And you can create them on the Excel side. But in addition to that, it also has a connection to the rest of the Microsoft suite. So if you wanted to use PowerPoint or Microsoft Word, it can pull down that detail into those. So you can have a predetermined, let's say, board packet that has a lot of different charts that you're frequently showing. And then you'd be able to essentially run it. It pulls in the new numbers and updates the layout for you. So the only thing that you're left doing is putting in the context. You don't need to worry about reformatting those charts or updating it for the new figures. It's all, it has that connection already happening. Awesome, thank you. All right, so I think that we're at a good stopping point, Zachary, because I don't have any other questions that have come in. And so I will let you wrap it up. Okay, uh, well, thank you everybody for joining. Thank you, uh, Melissa, for, for taking care of all the logistics. Um, and I uh, hope everybody has a, a great rest of their day. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye.